Hey guys, in this new video, we're going to take a look at structural formulas. So we're going to say your typical organic molecule can be drawn in a few different ways. So if we take, for example, pentane. Pentane's formula is C5H12. Now, there are different ways we can draw it. The three major ways that we can talk about it is our structural formula. In our structural formula, we show all the connections that each of the elements is making. We also call this our expanded formula. expanded because we've blown it out where every single bond is shown. And remember, carbon is tetravalent, tetravalent, meaning that carbon wants to make four bonds when it's neutral. So here, if you take a look, each carbon in the center is making four bonds in some way, either by making those bonds with hydrogens or with carbons around them. They're all making four bonds. Now, here, you can transition away from your structural formula to what's called your condensed formula. So in your condensed formula, you basically just push the bonds back in around that central element. So if you take a look, this carbon here, it is connected to one, two, three hydrogens. So it's a CH3 group. So there goes our CH3 group. This carbon here, it is connected to one, two carbons. So it's a CH2 group. This carbon here is connected to one, two. It's also CH2. This carbon here is connected to one, two. It is also a CH2. And then finally, the carbon at the end is connected to one, two, three hydrogens. That's why it's a CH3. So we go from the structural or expanded formula to the condensed formula where we push the bonds inward. So everything's compact, basically. And then next, we move to the skeletal formula. When you guys get to organic, you'll also hear it being called by a different name. We can hear that it's called by a new name, which is called the Kukuli or KQ structure. So K-E-K-U-L-E -E with a little uh, accent mark above the E. So Kukuli or, or KQ, depending on which professor you get, because they pronounce them differently. Um, that's a structural formula, a skeletal formula. Now, how do we read something like this? What you need to realize here is that every end is a carbon. Every end and every corner is a carbon. So there's a carbon here, 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 and here. So at both ends, there's a carbon. And basically at every edge, there's a carbon. Now the rule about skeletal formula is that you cannot show carbons. Carbons are invisible. They're there and we just can't draw them. And also, any hydrogens connected to them are also invisible. So the carbons are invisible and the hydrogens connected to them are invisible. Now, if you have an OH or an NH or some other group, if you have a different element than carbon and it has H's on it, then you'd have to show that different element and you can show the hydrogens connected to that different element. So again, when it comes to our skeletal formula, carbons are invisible and the hydrogens connected to them are also invisible. The only way I could show those hydrogens is if those hydrogens were connected to something different from carbon, such as a halogen, such as sulfur or phosphorus or oxygen or nitrogen. Now, remember, we said that carbon is tetravalent, meaning it needs to make four bonds to be satisfied. So every end, every corner is a carbon. So what you need to realize here is that if this is a carbon, we see it making one bond with another carbon. So that must mean it has three hydrogens on it that we don't see. Why does it need three hydrogens? Because again, carbon is tetravalent. It needs to make four bonds. Then here, this carbon is, we see it making one bond, two bonds. So that means it has two hydrogens we don't see to help it get to four bonds total. Same thing with this carbon. We see it's connected to one, two carbons. So it must have two hydrogens we don't see in order to get to four. Here, this carbon is making one, two bonds, so it needs two more hydrogens to get to four. And then finally, the N carbon, we see it making one bond here, so it must have three hydrogens we don't see. Now, you'll also hear about your professor talking about the ball and stick way of drawing these. That's with like models and stuff like that. But when it comes to actually taking the exam and doing the work um, either online or in class, these are the three predominant formulas that we use for any organic molecule. We can draw it as a structural formula where we expand all the bonds out. We can draw it as a condensed formula where we push the bonds in, 
or we can draw it as a skeletal formula where we do not show any carbons or the hydrogens connected to them. Now that we've seen this, I want you guys to attempt to do some of these example questions. We'll come back, take a look at each one one by one and see what's the best way to look at it. So remember, every corner, every edge is a carbon. So I'll help you guys a little bit on this first one. So every end, every edge is a carbon. So all those that I've marked are carbons. And remember, carbon is tetravalent. So what does tetravalent mean? Use that to determine the number of hydrogens on each of those carbons. Once you figure out the total number of elements, then you can get the molecular formula. Also remember, here, why do I have to show this hydrogen now? Because it's connected to an element different from carbon. It's connected to an oxygen, so now we can show it. This oxygen up here is different from carbon. It has no hydrogens on it. We know that hydrogen is not going to be invisible on it because, again, if it's an element different from carbon, we can show the hydrogens connected to it. So, guys, try to attempt to do this question on your own. We'll come back and take a look at this first one here.